Hello there. Uh, in this last video on the addition reactions of alkynes, I'm going to share with you a couple of things that we're used to alkenes doing that alkenes don't do, or I'm sorry, that alkynes don't do. Uh, and then I'm going to give a couple of examples of addition reactions of alkynes that uh, don't typically get covered in undergraduate organic chemistry course, but I want to just give you a sense of other things that alkynes can do. Uh, so here we go. The alkynes don't do dihydroxylation reactions. And then when you talk about the chemistry of alkenes, you actually talk about two different dihydroxylation reactions. This is the biggest example of things that alkenes do uh, that alkynes don't do. Um, when we talk about two sort of flavors of dihydroxylation, there's, there's an anti-dihydroxylation that actually uh, involves forming the... It, Epoxide first. Okay. And then um, hydrolyzing that epoxide in aqueous acid. Um, and then if this thing is chiral, it forms the enantiomer. Uh, there's also the syn dihydroxylation using osmium tetroxide. Which again, if the, the product is chiral, the enantiomer forms in this reaction as well. Uh, these two reactions basically either don't do anything uh, to, to alkynes or don't do anything useful to alkynes. So even though you will hear that everything an alkene can do, an alkyne will do twice. This is, these are two reactions that are alkene only. On the second screen in this video, I just really wanted to highlight some additional or uh, some other addition reactions that alkynes can do uh, that are sort of newer uh, and, and, and give some interesting behavior to alkynes. Uh, and the first two are, addition, are examples of other uh, anti-Markovnikov type additions. So, uh, the first one is a hydrozirconation. So we talked about hydroboration in an earlier video. Hydroboration is adding hydrogen and boron, and that happens in anti-Markovnikov fashion. The hydrogen ends up on the more substituted spot, the boron on the less. Hydrozirconation is the same way, just like the hydrogen-boron bond, the hydrogen-zirconium bond is, is polarized where hydrogen is more electronegative. Uh, and so the hydrogen ends up on the more substituted spot, the zirconium ends up on the less substituted spot. Uh, like the hydroboration, there's also some steric effects here. The R groups on, on zircon are usually big cyclic things. So, uh, And then this uh, vinyl zirconium creature uh, or species is nucleophilic at carbon and so can react with a whole range of electrophiles like 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 electrophiles like halogens and, and other things and so it could react with bromine to make a bromoalkene um, and because the hydrozirconation reaction is stereo is pretty stereoselective uh, then you end up pretty uh, with pretty much only the trans or the the e product here where if we talk about making that by a radical process you form a fair amount of the cis product also uh, the second example is this hydrostanylation reaction. So again, hydrogen tin, uh, the, the Latin name for, for tin is stanium, so it's hydrostanylation. Um, similar idea, the, the hydrogen tin bond is polarized where hydrogen is more electronegative than tin. Uh, hydrogen ends up on the less substituted spot, tin on the more substituted spot. Again, the tin has these three big butyl groups, so there's some steric effects there too. Um, and again, like all of these hydro something or other reactions, it's ster pretty stereospecific for syn addition. The hydrogen and the tin end up on the same side. Uh, and there are a couple of different different kinds of reactions these alkenal tin reagents will do. Uh, they can react with halogens as well to put halogens in place of the tin. Uh, this is not so much a nucleophile electrophile. It might have some radical characteristics to it. Um, 
but here's a good way that you can put an, an iodine in the less substituted position on an alkene, which we didn't really have a way to do before. Uh, and also these can react with aryl halides and palladium to form new carbon carbon bonds. And this is a, this reaction actually has a name, it's the Stilly coupling. Uh, and is another, is an example of palladium catalyzed coupling reactions uh, that won a Nobel prize recently. Uh, so, and, and stilly couplings and other things like them are used throughout organic chemistry uh, to make all kinds of really complicated molecules really quickly. As you study organic chemistry, you're going to come to realize that reactions that make carbon-carbon bonds are some of the most valuable reactions out there. And then the very last one is just this sort of neat reaction called the Huizgen uh, cyclization. Uh, I, I like it because I like the name Huizgen. It's kind of fun to say. But here is a cyclization or a cycloaddition reaction of, of an alkyne, usually a terminal alkyne, and an azide catalyzed by copper uh, to make this triazole compound. And these are kind of neat compounds that are finding their finding use in a number of material science applications. This concludes uh, my series of videos on the reactions of alkynes and on alkynes in general. Thank you for watching.